Hello and welcome to Tricks of the S Trade Channel. Today is the 16th of March 2018. Uh, today's video um, is about um, the myth of whiteness, part number 15, and it's also going to be the No Need for Pastor series, uh, part number two. Now, uh, the whole reason for the myth of whiteness was to make people understand that um, there's no such thing as white supremacy and there's no such thing as anybody being white. Uh, because the whole idea was to make you understand that um, we have to understand the meaning of the word white, where it comes from, that it's not uh, a designation for a color, but there, because there's no such color as white, because being white actually means, uh, I mean, the designation of white actually means an absence of all color. And that also, um, we, when we look at the facts, um, that white people are essentially albinos because the word white which is supposed to designate a color actually means that you're albinic and anybody who has straight hair is albino so this is the part number 15 so far because uh, when we started we didn't um, actually intend that this series would go this long but with every passing day we have a need to keep on you know making people understand this so if you're going to be watching this part number 15 you need to have to have a watch maybe from part number one down to here but if not if you're just picking up on the part number 15 to watch then that's okay so the whole myth of white supremacy is actually an illusion is not real because when we look at the facts the facts show us clearly that black people are biologically superior and structurally superior to whites so this whole idea of white supremacy and white superiority is actually an illusion fed to the masses to believe by the elite because they need it to be in power. And we've explained that thoroughly on the myth of whiteness. So uh, for this part number 15, the whole um, reason for the part number 15 is because um, when we started, uh, when I, um, we made a video, I think a couple of days ago on uh, the... Um, about Wakanda, whether Wakanda is real or not. And on that particular video, I made a comment saying that black women are the only women in the world who can keep on, you know, popping out babies without having problems. And that especially with uh, 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 with straight head people, you know, that they could, you know, give birth. And after that, maybe like the third child, they could start having complications. So the whole idea was trying to let people understand that is that you know that black people or black women in general are structurally structurally sound to be able to give birds repeatedly and keep on going without having any problems and uh, a lady made a comment on the um, the video saying that i was wrong and she was uh, trying to uh, she she brought up i'll show you the guys the comments so you guys can see how it went uh, so she was trying to say stuff like you know that uh, i'm wrong and everything else that actually that straight head people you know or uh, white as they call it can you know produce as much babies as you know black people so we'll show you all that in a minute or so but before we continue if, you're, if it's your first time on our channel and you want to continue watching or you've heard me say all that and you want to dive deep into this video, we advise that you pause the video right here and that you go look for the Primer video first. And when you watch the Primer video, then you can come back and continue watching this video. Because without you watching the Primer video, you're not going to have a basis for so many videos that we have on this channel. Because the aim here is to educate you. And because of that education, we are suffering some so many attacks from the Vatican, which is run by white supremacy and albinos who don't want you guys to know the truth. So as you look at my screen right now, you're looking at uh, a strike that's been put on account for trying to tell people the truth. And as you can see, the strike says that there is a violation of YouTube's policy on nudity and sexual content on the Selena Q video, which we made. But you would see that there is no minute mark on this violation because usually when you have any infringements on YouTube, they usually give you the minute mark on the video where the nudity does exist. But because this does not exist and the Vatican, which is YouTube, is trying to shut us down. All right. So that's why we are out here trying to make people understand that um, we're trying to put all the information that we have uh, in a book and send it across to you. We'll, uh, we'll send you an email very soon on the cost and price and shipping of the book so that you can 
get in on it because at any point in time the Vatican is going to shut us down for letting you guys know the truth because they want people to keep suffering from the illusion of white supremacy or white superiority which doesn't actually exist so with that said um, I would advise that you pause the video and go watch the primer video if you're a first-time subscriber and let me show you how to do that now so here is the primer video it's going to be the oldest video on the channel it has like maybe three videos on it uh, if you click on this video and you watch it there is a link in the description section and this link in the description section is in every video that we have on this particular channel this link will take you to a document right here called male versus female visual differences if you're a new subscriber we advise that you get this document and you study it for yourself because it will help you to understand the visual differences between male and female so you can do your own transvestigations on your own which is a necessity that everybody comes to that understanding so um, since we're neck deep in transvestigation and we're going to talk about who we're featuring on this particular show later after we've gone through this um, talking about um, uh, the differences between male and female on this particular document uh, it's a surprise and it's quite shocking because we did promise that every video that we're gonna make from uh, when we started the Clint Eastwood video would be very very shocking to everybody so you're looking at a female to the left of our screen and the female has an arch in the back a c-shaped arch in the back uh, if you're drawing the arch from below, uh, below the shoulder blades it's gonna form a c-shaped arch if you're drawing it from high up the shoulder blades it's gonna form an s-shaped arch and the arch is extra support for a female carrying pregnancy so that the weight of pregnancy can be distributed across the body properly so that the woman doesn't have any problems walking or hurting the baby and also the arch is because the pelvis of a woman is tilted forward so that a baby can stay inside the womb so a female always has a deep C arch in the back it can be subtle it can be pronounced and we'll talk all about that as we get in the video so people have a clear understanding Males do not have any arch in their back because males do not get pregnant. Males have a, a straight back or a D-shaped back or a P-shaped back but it's going to be straight down into the pelvis because males do not get pregnant. Uh, we scroll into the document just to show you that a female will always have a deep sea arch in the back and here is a woman right here and you can see that deep sea arch in the back because her pelvis is tilted forward and um, that's the reason for the arch there is always going to be an arch as you can see right here with this woman right down and then we scroll further into the document just to show you that it doesn't matter about the size of the female whether she's big small or tall there's always going to be an arch in a female's back so as you can see right here as we scroll further down here is a big woman to her left she has an arch in her back and her pelvis is tilted forward a small a female to our right arch in the back and the pelvis is tilted forward muscles do not can do nothing about that arch because um skeletally sorry to say that uh with a woman a woman is designed to give birth so nothing can change the skeletal structure what's that sex is a determinant of conception no matter what you do so that's the reason why we can identify the sex of a person from dead bones because the skeletal structure cannot be changed once it's been set at conception so as you can see right here is this muscular female who's probably taking some sort of testosterone or supplements to have this kind of muscles she still has an arch in the back another muscular female arch in the back so let's go and play one more clip to show you where the location of the female hip is at which is the most important aspect of identifying a male or a female because a female will always have hips below the crutch so she can give birth and so that a baby can come outside of the womb and so that the hips are not in the way of the birth canal so the hips are below the crutch and a man's hips are always going to be above the crutch so let's play that so we can continue on forward so here is the clip right here and as you can see this is a regular female regular in the sense that in being a normal female your hips should be wider than your shoulders that does not mean that a female cannot have wider shoulders than her hips but the location of the hips is always going to be below the crotch regardless so here is a regular female and with regular females you start getting wider from underneath your elbows because your pelvis starts getting wider and the widest point is always going to be the hips below the crotch so this female is going to get measured so you can see where the hip is at and as you can see that tape goes round and it is below the crutch not above it so the female is going to turn around from the back so you can actually see and know where the location of that hip is at from the back as you can see it's slightly above the bum line but below the crutch and the Q angle of a female is always going to start from below the crutch and females have 
a much more acute Q angle because the pubic arch is wider which is a necessity for a baby to come out of the womb if not a woman wouldn't be able to give birth so the Q angle of a man will always be above the crutch so like I've always said in most videos if you have difficulty trying to find out if somebody's male or female when you're taking the pictures pictures of the person from the front try to see if you can find pictures of the person from the back because once you see the pictures from the back you're going to know for certain that you're looking at either a male or a female because of how acute the Q angle is going to be from the back. So the Q angle here is below the crutch, just slightly above the bum line for a female. If this was male, this distance would be farther up into the butt. So the distance from the hip would be farther inside. It wouldn't be this close to the bum line that you see right here. So with that said, now let's continue on forward. So on our channel, our channel is an educational channel, so there is no slandering allowed and this is the warning I have to put on before we continue. So if you're going to say that someone is a transgender, you have to provide uh, links of pictures based on the female skeletal structure showing that the person has hips below the crutch, an arch in the back, a pelvis is tilted forward and a wide pubic arch. If you do not do so, your comments are going to get blocked. All right. So if you, even if you're asking questions and you think someone is a suspect, it's still considered slander. You have to provide those links of pictures. And you can't provide any frivolous facts such as like long arms, long torsos, Adonis belts, uh, Adam's apples, long ring index, index fingers, or jaw lines, or any other of those frivolous facts which have nothing to do with childbirth. Because the only thing that differentiates the sexes is that the ability of one to give birth, which is the female over the male. And that skeletal difference lies in the hips being below the crutch, an arch in the back and the pelvis tilted forward. So any other thing that you do not attach in your comment section when trying to label someone a transgender, and you're going to get blocked. So this is a different kind of channel. So like we've said before, we're putting everything you're going to be hearing from henceforth on this particular video is in our book. Um, we'll be sending emails out soon to those who already sent us an email and um, to let them know the price and the cost of shipping. So we haven't sent any emails out yet. So if you already sent us an email, you should not be worried that you haven't heard back from us because once we do, we'll send it out to everybody. And um, if you still have, you still have, I think, uh, uh, two weeks, uh, two weeks from now to do that. So um, if you, you still want to get, if you want to get the book, if you want to be get on the first uh, uh, batch that's coming out from print, you still have two weeks to do so. Um, after this week, uh, by next week, it's going to be in just one week left because we're going to send emails out after next week. So you still have a week to do so, so we can send you this book. Uh, this book will help you understand a lot of stuff that's going on in your world as we're about to get into this video. So um, if you're interested in watching the Selling the Q video that you're looking at the screen right here where the Vatican has put a strike on our account and is trying to shut us down for telling you the truth, uh, look for the Bono video. The Bono video will give you instructions on how to watch the Selling the Q video. So that's how uh, so far what we have to say and as usual we are not against anybody that's a transgender. We are here just exposing liars. Uh, we are here just exposing the whole system that's built and designed by a fraud and is trying to put people and enslave people and everything else. So who is the video about today is the question. Next question now. The video is about John Hagee. You probably guys, you guys have probably heard of John Hagee for a very long time. And uh, I want to give special thanks to one of our great subscribers who brought this to attention. And Amy, you know who you are. We thank you once and again. So who's John Hagee? Let's find that out first before we continue on to this part number two of No Need for Pastors and part number 15 on the myth of whiteness. Let's go. So we have, um, before we get into John Hagee, um, we wanted to start a series called small fish because there is a whole lot of people out there that i mean the numbers of people that we have to cover it's it would take us if, if i was to be living for a very long time and the team that's behind me would be living for a very long time it would take us three lifetimes to cover about five percent of the transgenders that is out there that the vatican is using to run a world so uh, we have a, a small fish list, people that are not so very popular, all right, in, um, in our world today, but they still influence it in one way, shape or form. 
So what we were thinking about was to start a small fish series, but uh, we said since we haven't been able to get around to doing that now, so with every video that we make, even though like this video is going to be featuring John Hagee, uh, we'll be adding like maybe a couple of small fish people inside the video as well. So just a heads up, it's going to be John Hagee, it's going to be his son called Matt Hagee, and it's going to be somebody from a, a very popular uh, hip hop group that a lot of people probably listen to all the time. You hear the songs on the radio, which is called The Migos. Uh, with the Migos, uh, a very special subscriber of us, let us uh, on in on that information because I think he's, I don't know if this subscriber is a he or she, I wish he would tell me. Uh, her name or his name is Chris and we want to thank Chris for bringing this to our attention as well. So those are the three people we're going to be featuring on this video. So if you're watching, then you'll know. So we're looking at John Hagee. Now John Hagee is a very influential so-called Christian diplomat in the American political circle. You hear about a lot of John Hagee on TV and he's always talking like fire from a brimstone. So one thing we have to know is that this so-called liars which the Vatican uses to run our world are one of the best sounding people that you'll ever listen to. In the way they talk, they talk with so much gusto that you actually believe it's truth. So this is one of the telltale signs when somebody's talking with so much gusto and he sounds like he's talking the truth with so much force coming out of him, he's probably telling you a lie. So we're looking at John Hagee's right, uh, let's say uh, John Hagee's official stats here. And as you can see, he says John, John Charles Hagee born April 12, 1940. The Vatican Code of Numbers is at work. 1.1 1. 1 plus 2, sorry to say, is a 3. So John Hagee, uh, let's just read through John Hagee's stats here and see what he says. It's John Charles Hagee, born April 12, 1940, is a father and senior pastor of Cornerstone Church, a mega church in San Antonio, Texas. So he's in San Antonio, Texas, and Hagee's also CEO of his nonprofit corporation, Global Evangelism. He's the five of six pastors in his family, all of whom were named John Hagee, dating back to the colonial era. So if this is true, that John Hagee's family have been five or six pastors dating back to the colonial era, then you should know that the Vatican has been hard at work fomenting Christianity, which is a very fake religion. Like I've said before, if any of you are going to a church, a church building to get your worship on, you're in the fakest religion, the most deceitful religion of all time called Christianity, which is run by the Vatican. You have no business in there because the Bible doesn't say you should be in a church in a church building. It says wherever you are, God is if you pray to him. And the Bible also says that you are the temple of God. So scrolling down from um, this um, into this particular uh, web page on John Hagee says, Hagee is the presidency of John Hagee Ministries, which telecasts his national radio and television ministry carrying the United States on 10 television networks. He's shown on networks around the globe, including the Dispersion Network, Trinity Broadcasting, Dispersion Now TV, John Hagee Ministries of Canada and the Miracle Channel and CTS and can be seen in places including Africa, Europe, Australia, and New Zealand. Hague is the founder and national chairman of the Christian Zionist organization, Christians Reunited for Israel Incorporated, 7, 2006. So, John Hagee, because he's always, it seems like one of the things that we can identify with John Hagee is the fact that he's always talking about Israel. And he's also talking about, he's always talking about the fake albino Jews who are in Israel today as the people of the Bible, that that's what the Bible talks about. But people have to understand this. This is going to hurt a lot of especially fake Hebrew Israelites there who identify as such. The Hebrew, the Israelites do not exist anymore. The way God looks at Israel today, he looks at them through the eyes of anybody who believes in Yehoshua. That is just fact. So, if you say you're a Hebrew Israelite and trying to identify yourself as an ethnicity, you're in the wrong. God does not look at you that way. This is going to hurt, but we've put all this detailed information in the book to make you understand that what you're looking at is actually wrong. So, um, scrolling further into the document uh, right here, we just want to pick apart this document just to show you how fake um, this... Uh, um, so that it, uh, what we want you to see is that every name that's mentioned on the John Hagee document right here is actually picked, uh, 
names of liars of people who were associated with the Vatican. Because, for example, we said here, it says here he received an honorary doctorate from Oral Roberts University. Oral Roberts was another popular preacher or televangelist. That means it's a Vatican stooge. So I'm just trying to show you what's going on here on how the Vatican uses all right, Christianity to control your mind. Uh, let's scroll down further down here just to show you some other stuff. It says relationship with Israel. The San Antonio Bernay Birth Council awarded Hagee with his humanitarian of the year award. He was the first time his award was given to a non-Jew. Hagee was presented with the Zionist Organization of America's Israel Award by Union Ambassador Jane Carpatrick. So what was by the Jewish community of Dallas, Texas. He was presented with the ZOA Service Award by Texas Governor Mark White. Um, Hagee has been to Israel more dozen times and has met with every Prime Minister of Israel since Menachem Begin. John Hagee's ministry has given several million dollars to bring Jews from the East, former Soviet Union to Israel as well as military to support Jewish orphanages and other water causes for the Jewish people in Israel and around the globe. Hagee is founder and executive director of the Night to One on Israel, an event that expresses solidarity between Christians and Jews on behalf of Israel, the state of Israel and the United States. So everything here is a fabrication by uh, 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 by the uh, you, you know the Vatican and, and this is how the Vatican sells lies I just want to read this part because this is the part that I want you to see when the Vatican is setting you up to believe in somebody who they want you to think that the person is happy organically that means he's not an agent he's not controlled or anything else it says here Hagee has been criticized for his statements about Israel the Roman Catholic Church and Islam so they're trying to make you feel like you know he's not part of the deal because he talks about Israel first and the Roman Catholic Church and Islam but all these people right here are controlled by the Vatican by the Roman Catholic Church so this is how the Vatican sets you up to believe in this false histories. Now, here's the question that we have to an, uh, answer so that people can understand something. A lot of people get the idea that history means what somebody officially tells you is history. So, for example, uh, maybe somebody wrote a biography about themselves or let's say your institutions or organizations of uh, a nation tell you this is the official history of our country, of our world. So people get the idea that that is history. But here's what you guys have to understand. History is anything that you see, that you read, or you hear. Because history tells you or is trying to inform you of what's going on around you. Okay? So history is anything that you hear, read, or see. So as you're watching my screen right now, as you're hearing me speak, what you're hearing is history. When you turn on your TV, anything that you're watching on your TV, any images that you see around you is history. Because all that is trying to tell you a story. A story. Is trying to uh, put you, uh, is trying to, the best way I can put it is that it's trying to give you thoughts to think about and it's trying to give you an identity. So that is history. Anything that's trying to give you an identity, is trying to give you a perception of your world, that is history. So you have to understand that. So when you're looking at the images, let's say all the images around you, uh, in your ads and billboards, what you're reading in your books, what you're looking at on your TV and what you're hearing on your screen, what you're hearing is history. So know that. So anything you see, hear or read is trying to give you an identity, all right? And that identity is your history. So uh, this is the part that I have to uh, advise that it's going to be a long video. So if you do not like long videos, uh, there's no need for you to sit through this one. You could just exit and 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 so save yourself the time. But let, let's get into it because um, um, we want to talk about the myth of whiteness. All right, because um, I'll, I'm going to start the uh, video from showing you um, a discourse that we had with this particular lady because a lot of people do not understand that um, when we talk about the myth of whiteness, all right, it's not about, you know, trying to um, make somebody feel bad in any way, shape or form. All what we're trying to do is show you 
what is being hid from you to make you understand that the system of white supremacy which is at work is an illusion is a mental illusion because the facts that we see do not say so so for example what am I talking about the facts that we see so let me give you a little bit you know history then I'll, I'll start showing you step by step so you guys can understand that first of all um, um, how was the best way I can start this story I'm trying to find the best way to start this story but first of all what you have to understand is this um, when you if you say you believe in God because the whole idea of our um, channel here is to make you see that there is a grand design at work and things are not just happening and we don't just arrive here by chance because the system of this world which is run by the Vatican is trying to take God out of the picture because the Vatican is run by the devil alright so if you're on our channel what you're gonna get at the end of the day is that God is very real and the God we're talking about is the God written about in the Geneva Bible and the King James Bible. We're not talking about the God of Christianity because Christianity is a whole different ball game of a religion. Even though Christianity is going to cloak and say that they're worshipping God, they're actually not. So, to start this story, let's look at the comment that this lady made. Now, this lady uh, is called, she says her name is Fruit of the Spirit, okay? So, as you can see here, this is somebody who actually thinks that they believe in God. But you cannot believe in God and look at truth and deny the truth. Because the very first thing that the Bible talks about is that God is looking for people who are going to worship Him in spirit and in truth. The truth is sometimes very, very hard to swallow. Let's just be honest about that. Because, uh, like, like for me, for example, um, trying to wake people up from their slumber to see the reality of the world is not something that I really enjoy doing. Okay? I'm not doing it because I'm, I'm getting any kickbacks from it or from anything else like that. We are doing it, and I specifically am doing it because I feel that it's our duty. Why do I say it's our duty or it's my duty to do so? Based on the fact, I am somebody who doesn't like, um, what's the best way I can put it? Um, I don't like the fact, let me just be very honest, okay? I don't like the fact that someone created me. It makes me feel very powerless. It makes me feel like I'm just a toy or something very, very insignificant. To be very, very honest, okay? Even though I've studied the Bible and I'm trying to understand life, I still feel that way. That I have no control over my being. And sometimes people, alright, can think that way as well. Because you kind of feel like you're just being used. So the best way I could put it is like, uh, if you own a dog, okay? Um, the dog, it's more like the dog doesn't really have a choice except what you provide for it, okay? That's sometimes the way I feel. It's the reality that we have to face, face, face well, come, or come to terms with, rather. Because when you um, look at your life, we do not know what makes us alive. I have never seen what makes me alive that keeps that's inside of what, what wakes me up every morning or gives me the consciousness of being who I am. I do not know about that. I can't even touch it. I don't see it. Nobody knows what keeps us alive. Because some people might say that being alive means you're breathing, okay, it means you're... Um, uh, maybe a walking and moving then that makes your life but we see people every day who do uh, who want, uh, who are, whose hearts are beating and breathing but they are not moving they are not showing you the signs or symbols of life so it, it, it kind of bothers me 
that I do not know that. All right? So I'm not very comfortable with a lot of things. Because when you start thinking about it and coming uh, and look at the reality and the facts that of what you're looking at, you find out that there is something much more bigger at work. And it seems like, you know, in most cases, the world we look at, it seems like God just dumped us here and he doesn't really care about us and all that. These are all thoughts that, you know, should bother anybody. Okay? But here is one thing I have come to accept in all of this. I have to accept the reality of the situation that I am in or that we are in and know that this is fact. Because anybody trying to argue about reality and facts, you're actually doing yourself more harm than good. Okay? So with me, I come to that acceptance that it is what it is. There is nothing I can do about it. But most people are not willing to accept that. All right? To accept reality and facts. They base their lives on an illusion. So, for example, this lady here calls herself the fruit of the Spirit. She probably, because based on the name, that sounds like a Christian religious name. And if she was going to go by what she's saying, she's supposed to accept facts. The fact is that people of woolly hair are biologically and structurally superior than people with straight hair who call themselves whites or, as we should call it, albinos. Or anybody at all that has straight hair. This is a fact. This is a study that has been done and this is what we see every day in our lives when you're comparing or measuring yourself up to black people. This is something we see. So for example, what are black males known for? What are black males known for in a, a sexual term? They usually, usually like using this word BBC. Okay, and some ladies will say, if you guys want to know what BBC is, just uh, go on Auburn Dictionary and type BBC or go on your search engine and type in BBC and see what results come out. Because I don't want to make this, uh, you know, a deviant kind of uh, video. So I want people to understand because it's educational. Black males are known for having a BBC. All right. A male aesthetic that is only attributed to black males. Is that a fact? Is it reality? Because when we're talking about this, this is something that's noted for that black males do have. Is it something we see every day? Can we associate that that's a fact? Okay, another a quick example. What are black females known for? All right. Black females are known to have very humongous butts. Now, a lot of people with straight hair get this confused. They confuse a butt with hips. Those are not one and one the same thing. Every woman has hips. Okay? Hips and a butt is not the same thing. Because when you're looking at somebody from the front, especially if it's female, you're going to say, see that have, they have very curvy figures. But when they turn around from the back, when you're looking in at the back, all right? I'm not talking about, you know, uh, women who, um, you know, put on very uh, form-fitting clothes and jeans, okay, which give the butt some kind of lift. Maybe they're wearing some sort of tight pants or yoga pants or jeans, which are made in such a way that they, uh, they move the butt up, all right, and give it a roundness and fullness. But if they take those clothes off on like a beach, you start wondering where was all what I saw when she was wearing clothes. Black women are the only people who, when they take off the clothes at a beach in a bikini, the butt is still the same as it was when they did not take it off. And this is a known fact because I'm going to show this. All this is I'm going to show with proof which we see every single day. If you go watch hip hop videos, and you compare a black woman with anybody else with straight hair. 
and they're of the same weight and same height, you'll still find out that the black woman still trumps anybody else with straight hair. Why is that? And it seems like the leaner the people that with straight hair get, the more little fat that they seem to have on the behind starts disappearing. But black women are the only people who are lean with just a butt. I'm not talking about hips. So there's two differences. There's a difference between a hip and a butt. Black women have both. And they're lean. And people with straight hair will always seem to have more fat if they're trying to have a butt. And like I said before, I'm not talking about the kind of butt that you see in clothes which make it look a certain way. Because a lot of people get confused about hips and butt. They don't know the difference. There's a difference between the two. So these are facts that we see every day. So for example, if you go to a gym, okay? What are black males known for? Black males have more muscle mass they have clear separation in their muscles. They're able to build bigger muscles and are usually, are usually the bigger people in the gym. That's just fact. Even in bodybuilding, it shows you that. In bodybuilding, if you notice, when people are trying to get on stage, they tan themselves darker. Why is it that they tan themselves darker? Because... The darker people have more muscle mass and more definitions showing through. I'm not just talking about somebody being big, all right? Being big because anybody can get big. I'm talking about definition. I'm talking about muscle separation and symmetry. I'm talking about quality muscle not mixed with a lot of water and a lot of fat. We're going to show you all these examples as facts. It's our reality. So anybody arguing with it is just being pointless. It's just like arguing with the ocean. Jump inside and see. And then you find out that it's really an ocean. So coming back to this, this lady calls herself the fruit of the spirit. And she was really trying to go after the truth or fruit of the spirit of in what she would call maybe a Christian manner. She would know that you're supposed to accept truth because the whole idea of saying you believe in God is to accept truth. So let me read a portion from the Bible so you can see that. I'm reading from um, John uh, chapter number 4, the book of John. I'm reading from the Geneva Bible. All right. So you can pause the video, copy out the link, or just pick up the Geneva Bible or any of your Bibles and go to John chapter number 4. And I'm reading from verse number 23. It says, But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father required even such to worship Him. God is a spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and truth. So if this lady's name says fruit of the spirit, what she's doing here is avoiding truth. Because the facts we see each day show you that black people are superior biologically and genetically. We are not saying this so that people who are not black should feel bad. No. We are saying this because we're trying to make you understand the illusion that's all around you in the so-called white supremacy that it's false. That's all what we're doing. I'm just a messenger delivering a message. So it's more like if you have a problem with me, you're actually having the problem with the message and not me. It's just like a postman delivered something that you ordered from Amazon and it's a bad product okay and you do not like the product and you go arguing with the postman instead of taking up your trouble with Amazon that's just that I'm just a messenger I'm not saying I'm a messenger because I don't want people to get this twisted and say oh now he's uh, he's talking he's hearing from God he's a messenger from God I'm no such thing God doesn't talk to me I have never met him. All what I'm doing 
uh, all what we are doing is just trying to let people know the truth so you understand the reality wake up to the reality of your world and stop living in the fantasy and this lady right here is living in the fantasy so let's go about the story properly of what really happened what happened was um on the Wakanda real or uh, fake uh, video that we made I said that black women are the only women in the world who can keep popping out babies without having any problems and that people with straight hair after a couple of babies may have problems the word there was may have problems but that black people can keep going on and there is no such thing so now this lady because I'm gonna read the context so you can understand her this lady's mind that she was just trying to prove that whatsoever I said was actually false so she sent me a comment and said I know a Caucasian couple who have 11 children now there's something I have to talk about here on the meaning of Caucasian there are two words in the word Caucasian the word is Calc and Asian because we've always said and we've all like we we show you so many examples in the book to let you know that people who call themselves Caucasian came from Asia the two words in Caucasian are cock and Asia because those are their origins the origins of the people who call themselves white today and call themselves Caucasian their origins are in Asia that's why the name cock Asian cock and Asia because they came from Asia so that's just what I want you guys to note that. First of all, there. So let's continue. She says, I know a Caucasian couple who have 11 children. And I told her, I know of a black couple who have 22. And then I said, I will put uh, this in the next video, which is what I'm doing right here. Here's a woman from Uganda with 38 children, uh, a present day war record from a black woman. Do you have any Caucasians who can do that? Because what she's trying to tell me is that is not true what I'm saying that all what I'm saying is lie that Caucasians who are from Asia based on the name be says Caucasian because that is what they label anybody who is white Calc Asian the name even tells you that they came from Asia they're not European they call them Caucasians all right so um I put up a link out which I'll show you in a minute uh, and I said here's the link to the article so she so she came back now when you read I want gonna read this uh, comment that she made so you can understand that she's one of those people who has an ego because she's been fed for so long and she actually believed in the myth of white supremacy of white superiority that white people or albinos in general as we call it are the better of the species and so have many people believed it even black people believe that as well but the reality when you look at it every day shows you the opposite for example if you pick a black person a healthy black person and a healthy people a healthy person of any straight hair and you compare the skin who has the better skin is something you see every day who is, who is in their 50s and 60s and looking so wonderful like they're 20 year olds and you could never even imagine when they told you that who are doing this the most but we'll show you all this with facts because we don't just want to talk we'll be showing you facts so you guys can see because it's something you see in everyday life so let's read this comment on what this lady is trying to say she says here thank you for your comment and references I hear you but 38 children is not the average a given woman of color will give birth to now here is how most albinos especially those people who have been sucked and having egos on white superiority speak this thing has been passed down from the elite down and trickles down to almost every I'm not saying everybody it trickles down to almost everybody who believes in the myth of white superiority they speak in a way that's condescending but you kind of they make it look like they're not doing that at the same time all right so first of all she starts out by giving a compliment but the compliment is condescending because as you start reading into this you start seeing that she actually doesn't mean what she's saying okay let's read on it says uh, 
38 children is not the average given a woman of color will give birth to. Checking the Radford family in England. So she says, I could go check the Radford England. So she started out by saying 38 is not the average, right? But I should go check the Radford uh, people in England, which meaning which means she's talking about a Caucasian couple, right? 20 children from the same mother and father, and they are Caucasian. And she didn't have multiple babies at once. These were all single baby pregnancies. So her argument is right here that the Caucasian couple gave birth 20 times to single babies. All right. And her argument is going to try to say that the Ugandan woman uh, who actually by her birth count gave birth 17 times because she had a lot of like quadruplets or whatsoever would not have given birth more because she was pregnant 17 times but the question is this if the Caucasian couple pushed out a child 20 times the Ugandan woman in Africa pushed it out 38 times that is still giving birth to 38 babies it doesn't matter how many times you got pregnant it's about pushing those babies out because every time you get pregnant you're going to deliver a baby and if you have if you have triplets or quadruplets or you're pregnant with quadruplets you're still going to be pushing out those babies one at a time but you know she's trying to show me that what i'm saying is actually wrong well let's read on here it says um um she didn't uh, the culture and she didn't have multiple babies at once they were all single baby pregnancies this also obviously isn't the average amount of the children in any given white family my point really is that you made a comment that white people can give birth to more than a few children i never said that on the video i said that they would have complications and the whole idea was trying to show you that albino people or white as they call it cannot compete with black people in uh, black women in giving birth because they are not structurally built that way as we're going to show you here today with facts it's something you see every day all right so she went on saying um um that okay uh, uh she said my point really is that you made a comment on the white people then uh, can give birth to more than a few children that they will start having problems with pregnancies and i happen to know from personal experience that this statement is not completely accurate okay she say my statement is not completely accurate the question what i said will may have problems after the third child okay that's what my statement was on that video continue on she says where I come from, many white people have more than six children and 10 to 12 is common. And your above mentioned number of children, 38, were multiple births. So she's trying to tell me that the 38 children were multiple births. Just like I explained to you that even if this woman, all right, was pregnant 17 times as she actually was and gave birth to 38 babies, she still had to push the baby one at a time. You know, white supremacy has made a lot of people, all right, has painted black people to be of very poor backgrounds, all right? And it's always trying to show you that since you're eating at McDonald's, all right, and you are live inside maybe an apartment building, and you have maybe better roads than people who are in Africa, that your life is far better off. That is the, the fantasy that's painted to a lot of people. So white supremacy makes, because the TV, when you watch on TV, it's always showing you like the villages in Africa and how poor these people are. It, it kind of gives you a chip on the shoulder. But this is all very, very false. Because what you see on TV is not actually what's always real in the first place. But let's keep on reading. So you can see that this lady is suffering from a real bad illusion because she's getting to find out that the reality of what her world was is not what she thought to be and she's still hanging on to the threads. So let's go on. It says here, um, and you mentioned above, uh, measure above number of 38 children with multiple births the woman wasn't pregnant 38 times she was pregnant maybe 10 to 12 times and she had her first child at 13. we'll show you all that facts because 
the so-called Caucasian woman she's saying here in England started at a 14. So what is really the argument? This is just somebody who's pent up that her false reality of white illusion as she's waking up to find out to see the truth which we've been presenting is actually false and she's still hanging on to it. We're not here to talk anybody down. We don't care about what ethnicity or color of hair you are. All we are is just presenting facts and truth to you. You choose to believe it or you choose to line up with it, that's up to you. You choose not to, it's still up to you. A lot of people have always believed white supremacy or white superiority for so long without actually not looking into it. Because the facts you see every day say that, don't say that. The fastest runners in the world, the greatest athletes in the world who run, are black people. For example, the Kenyans or the Ethiopians who go for so many long distance races, nobody can compete with them. Blacks in athletics, in NFL, they are the biggest, strongest guys. There are sports out there which limit blacks from performing, but if they get into it, they become the best at it. This is just fact we see every day. So what is the argument really? Because white supremacy and white superiority only exist on paper. The reality we see every day doesn't tell us so. And why is this possible? Because the Vatican, the elites who run this world, control all what we see, all what we hear, and all what we read. And so we've come to accept it when the reality we see every day tells us differently. Okay, so let's continue on. So she, uh, she says, um, she was pregnant baby 10 to 12 times and she had a first child at 13. As she's still young, who is to say she won't start having problems giving birth when she's over 40 like many women do at that age? It is a known fact that people of different colors have more children when they are in lower socio-economic position. So now she's trying to, you know, tell us that the reason why this black woman, alright, is able to give birth to 38 children is because she's poor. So that's why she's reading all these fine lines into it because her ego is hurt. Okay, fine. The lady is poor, but she still gave or she still pushed out 38 babies. And compared to your Caucasian woman who pushed out 20, that number surpasses it 18 times. If black people, if we just wanted to, wanted to end this conversation right here, if black people weren't superior genetically and structurally, the albino woman should be able, we should have a record of somebody who's been able to give birth 38 times as well or push out 38 babies like this black woman. And then we wouldn't be even having this conversation. So let's continue on. So you can see how white supremacy is mental. It's not real. The facts don't say so. Okay? So continue, she said, it isn't just about ethnicity, and to be fair, people of color have complications with birth too, just as some white people have many children and may not have complications. I do like now this is how this is how people, you know, this is how white supremacy talks, even with the elite. They talk down on you, just like they do with the movie that which started all this, which is um Wakanda, uh, uh Black Panther. They talk down on you, but they, they put in some sort of, you know, like compliments so you don't notice that they're actually talking down on you. All right, so let's keep on reading. It says, uh, uh, and to be fair, people of color have complications with birth too, just as some white people have many children and may not have complications. I do like your channel and the information you share. I just felt that this is the instance your information wasn't based on pure fact. But then our definition of many birds may be different. So she she knows that what she's saying is pure prejudice, all right? But she still goes on. So uh, my comment is very, very long, but I'm, I'm not going to read my comment too much. But you can uh, type out Fruit of the Spirit and go to the um, 
Wakanda, um, Wakanda real or fake video and you see this comment. So I was trying to let her know that we are not talking about social economic albino privileged positions that cause people to give multiple births. Because what she's trying to say is that she just wants to rub it in and say this Ugandan woman, this African, poor African is because she's poor so she gave birth 38 times. That's all what she's trying to say. If she wasn't so poor, she wouldn't be able to give 38 times and so in what she's trying to say is that the albino Caucasian woman who's rich in England as we uh, as they're gonna make us understand is the reason why that she's uh, that she gave birth to 20 is because she's rich and so she doesn't really want so many other babies. Well, the fact still says that she was poor she gave birth to 38 38 babies she pushed out 38 children so if she was rich how many would you do you think she would be able to give birth to if the albino woman in England can give birth to 20 babies so I go on down here and and uh, uh, this is where we um, um I, I, it's the same thing I'm just saying because the same thing I'm talking about is the same thing I, I said in my comment. My claim is that only black women can give birth and still keep on popping babies like this Ugandan woman has done without any problems with low social economic standard, which means poor. And I backed up the statement. Where is yours? Because the proof and links to your, to your pictures or website article. So she sent me this article right here. And this is um, the article right here. It which shows the Radford family. You can pause the video at any point in time, copy out the link so you can go read up on it. And and here is the link to the Ugandan woman. Oh, sorry, this is not showing right here. Let me okay. This is the link to the Ugandan woman. You can pause the video, copy out the link, and go see that this Ugandan woman, 37, she's 37, and she has 38 children. Now the Radford woman, she claimed, I think she was about uh how old is she? Let me see. Uh, it says here uh, mm, the woman is she's 47 years age or no so she's 42 rather Susan Sue 42 and this Ugandan woman was 37 with 38 kids and she's still going strong and here is the picture of the woman right here with some of her children the Ugandan woman so if you're interested in the article you could pause the video at any point in time and copy it out so now let's get into the fact. Let's let's show you the facts so you guys can understand that what we're saying, we are not just talking because we did not write any of these web pages that you're gonna see that we're reading these facts from. Um, all what we're showing you is going to be straight from the white albino organizations themselves who have started this for a very long time to see that black people are biologically and structurally superior in all truth. So the myth of white supremacy is something that just is on paper, that it's a mental ascent, it's something we believe in our minds. It is not real. It's not real. The facts don't show so. So let's get into it. So to start this conversation, uh, to show you the facts, um, you can pause the video at any point in time and copy out this link. Please, people, I want you guys to copy out these links and go read up on yourself. I don't want it to sound like we're just talking right here because these are facts. We see it every day. Okay? Now, to start off this conversation, first of all, we hear uh, most times that um, black people... Uh, you, you, you probably hear this uh, 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 every time that um, is based on your genetics. That means if you look a certain way, or walk a certain way, or you're stronger a certain way, you look somehow. They say you have great genetics. But what is this thing about genetics? What does it mean for us or somebody to have great genetics? Because this is a word that's thrown around all the time. And and, and let's let's just uh, explain this a little bit further. When we hear of the word genetics, that means the root word there is genes. That means at the basis level, at the most minute level, you have good genes. That's what uh, the word genetic means. But what is genetics in reality? What does it actually mean? Because we cannot see the genes, all right, with our own naked eyes, all right? But there are other things that we can see that makes you understand what it's talking about. So, in a very uh, short sense of the word, the word genetics 
because this is one of the words that is being banded around a lot because in all reality there is no such thing as genes let's just be truthful about that there's no such thing as genes in all reality in the medical world it's a made-up word okay so that these people the albinic elite in the vatican who run our world and teach us what we hear can give us some sort of satisfaction that they can give answer to the smallest minute element about us in our lives genes are not real those guys don't know what the hell it is or what is it talking about the only difference they know is this that when you take a sperm all right and mix it with an egg that what comes out is a child they can't tell what the sperm is made of they just know that the bigger sperm or the bigger sperm that's swimming from the semen of any man is always indicative of a male sperm and the smaller sperm all right which swims low slower is always indicative of a female sperm that a man carries that's all they know so when they say genes everything is every because from genes you get DNA and all the other lies that come with it it's all false all right so what does genetics talk about when you hear that word so today I want you to understand when he says you have good genetics it means you have good bones because it's the bones that everything that you have on is built the bone marrow in your body is responsible for producing all the cells that your body has so for example you get sick maybe you guys have heard of this before bone marrow replacement or bone they take something from the bone marrow and they try to manufacture whatever you've heard that which is not physically possible but they tell you all those good stories on TV and the media and everything else and you guys soak it in good genetics just means you have good bones and black people have the best bones they have the denser stronger bones and let me show you that before I read this part of the story so you could pause the video at any point in time and copy out this link and go read up on it it says here in a study of 161 women in whom bone mass density BMD means bone mass density was measured at seven sites with the use of single and dual photon absorption absorption I'm sorry absorbmetry okay absorptiometry sorry to say Nelson et al confirmed that bone mass density is greater in blacks than in whites whereas further statistical analysis showed that body size variables correlated most strongly with the density of the bones however this author speculated that greater fat mass rather than LBM may contribute more to the high bone density seen in black women all right rather than uh, we'll talk about that so it is a known fact that black people all right have the greater bone mass density than anybody else this is a fact let me read some more stuff from here it says here more recent research favors a hormonal link to racial increases in bone mass density right at all of 10 measurements of group of both growth hormone and both mandate both mass density in 16 black and 17 white men serum 17 B estradiol growth hormone concentration and secretion and bone mass density were all greater in blacks than in whites you hear that the authors suggested that the highest circulating estradiol concentrations in blacks may have contributed to the greater secretion of growth hormone which in turn led to an increase in bone mass see a lot of people know this truth all right uh, we'll, we'll talk about it some more but let me just read some more stuff so you can still see that this is fact we see it every day in sports okay so let's keep on reading and show you some more stuff I continue reading it says according to the medical stats theory a network of osteocyte detects bone strain and modulates the activity of remodeling cells the menocats uh, the mechanostat set points in blacks is lower than in whites that is the strain needed to trigger bone growth is less in blacks giving them denser bones 
So what does that mean? It takes very little stress on the body for the black bones to grow and be stronger than whites or anybody that has straight hair. Some more stuff so you can understand the genetics of all this. So here's the part that uh, we just want, want to end the bone part to let you know that structurally black people have the superior bone structure. They even have longer bones. We'll show you that as well here. It says the bone densities of 67 black and white cadavers were examined by using radiographic densitometry by Bacon Angel. The density, ash density, protein density, and ash and protein contents as percentage of dry fat-free bone of the seventh thoracic vertebrae, eighth rib, tibia, fibula, calcaneus, radius, and ulna were measured. The individual bones from the black cadavers were significantly denser than the bones from the white cadavers. The authors attributed the greater densities to greater amounts of protein-bound calcium in the same volume of bone segment. So black people have naturally stronger bones. When we're talking about black people here, we're talking about healthy black folk. Because I don't want somebody throwing in uh, uh, some sort of like, uh, you know, um, uh, that is a maybe or there's a tendency or whatever. We're not talking about sickly black folk. We're talking about sound, healthy black folk. They have the best bones. So when they say genetics, the first thing that you have to understand that is talking about your bones. It's not just talking about the way you're built. Your bones because the way you're built is dependent on your bones. If you have to be built well, you have to have good bone structure. So let's um, read something more um, on here for you to understand some various other things. Because we want to put all this information together so you can understand that the myth of white superiority only exists in our mind because the facts do not say so. The reality do not say so. Let's go. So still from the same website that I'm reading, it says here, Meds et al. and still examined cadavers for racial differences in bone mass content. BMC means here, BMC means here bone mass content and skeletal weight. The whole body skeletal weights obtained from these studies are enumerated in table 2. Meds and all use radiograph of the femur to measure the bone mass content of the skeletons of 203 blacks and whites of similar stature aged 16 to 91 years old. The mean femur weight and skeletal weights of the black men and women were greater than those of the white men and women, respectively. The circumference and amount of compact bone of the shaft of the femur were also greater in blacks than in whites. Additionally, the authors noted that blacks have proportionally longer arms and legs than do whites. Longer forearms and legs than do whites, which is a fact. So the longer legs and longer forearms makes black people even walk differently. I mean, if you study the gait of where black people work, or walk rather, compared to how anybody else with straight hair, you would find out that the gait is different. Why? Because they have longer limbs and the women have more wider hips and the smaller waists and a shorter torso. We'll talk all about that here. We'll show you with facts so you guys can see. But let's go over and just deal with something because we're going to try to put all this information together to give you the bigger picture. So let's do that. So now we want to start seeing why black women, like I've said before, black women are the only women who have bigger butts. I'm not talking about hips. Because there's a difference between hips and butt. Like I've said before, if anybody else who's not black seems to want to have a butt, they're going to have more fat in their bodies. Now, why is that the case? So, here is what happens. When you touch a black woman's body, all right, a black woman's body is going to have more body than fat. Why? Because black people in general have more muscle mass and tissue than fat in their body. So what, how are you going to make the comparison? You have to find somebody who has straight hair that is of the same height 
and weight with a black person. Of the same height and weight, you will find out that the black bodies have more body. More body in the sense that they have more tissue, more muscle mass, and less fat. And with somebody else who has straight hair, in that comparison, he is trying to have maybe some sort of a butt or whatsoever, will have more fat content in their body. We'll explain how all uh, uh, the people carry weights. We'll explain how black people carry their weights and how um, you know uh, people with straight hair carry their own weights. That's the fat that they carry in their bodies. But here, I want you guys to read something here with us and see what's going on here. It says here, the black females had greater skeletal muscle mass. So that's what he's talking about, fat-free bodies. When you hear of that word fat-free, it means you have it means you have more body, that means more tissue in your body or more muscle mass than fat. Alright, it says black females had greater skeletal muscle mass in the upper, lower, and combined extremities. That means everywhere. Okay, when total skeletal muscle mass was combined with total bone, body bone mass to provide an estimate of musculoskeletal uh, mus mass, black females had 14.7% 14 higher value than white females. So when you're combining the musculoskeletal uh, mass of black females, it's higher. They have more mass in their bodies in the terms of they have more tissue and more muscle than fat. While anybody with straight hair will be not the same. They'll have more of fat than the muscle mass in their body. That's just that. When you compare the height and the weight of the people of the females side by side. So when I was talking about on the video that for any female, especially Hispanic females, because um, here's the difference between the three uh, uh, so-called uh, major, as they would call it, uh, fabricated races and how they carry fat. Let me just pull up uh, something right here and read, then we can come back and continue this. So let me read and make you guys understand how black women in general carry fat in their body, which makes them to be very, very curvy with a bigger butt. I'm not talking about hips. I keep emphasizing the butt because every female has hips. Okay? It's the butt. The ability. Because one, first of all, you have to understand that the black females, um, black females have um, a shorter torso. Uh, or black people in general have shorter torsos than anybody that has uh, straight hair. That's just pure fact. Um, let me show you that first before I read this. So here's a website on a, that talks about why black athletes run faster than anybody with straight hair, which is something we see every day. You know, the funny story about being an athlete is this. Let me just make you guys understand something. Um, for a very long time, when the albinos from Asia, who call themselves Caucasian, Asian, as the name actually says they're from Asia, came into power, and they were subjugating and, you know, killing off aboriginal black woolly haired people around the world in trying to raise themselves a community that could keep the elite in power or breed more people who look like them to have a population which puts them in power. While subjugating a lot of these uh, black people around the world, uh, they started finding out that these black males or black males in general were, ve were very, very masculine. They were leaner, cut. It seems like they were just, you know, different. They were stronger physically and everything. So when um, competitions, when later on as uh, towards the uh, 1800s came about and... Uh, and the, uh, the Albanian people were doing competitions amongst themselves of, with physical strength behind closed doors. They found out that the black people in general, which were sportsmen, uh, let's say people they use for their sports, were beating them in everything. And these are people that you're subjugating. They didn't quite understand. 
we always thought we were the superior beings. Why are we being outclassed and beat so much in everything behind closed doors? So this was all happening behind closed doors. In games like baseball, which was played behind uh, you know, closed doors a lot, and sometimes they would put on the black people for sport, just like a ridicule and having fun. They would find out that these black guys who were actually their slaves or whatever were outperforming them. So these guys weren't finding it funny. The, the, the white elite at that time. So they tried to, you know, uh, they tried to bar black people for the longest time ever in competing in any sports. Because it was actually showing that the myth of white superiority wasn't actually true. So because of this, they now started, because they had access to a lot of black people that they could kill at any point in time, when they started studying the, uh, the bodies of these black people, they started finding out the defen deficiencies that they had. So for example, in, uh, in, the start, in those studies, they found out that a lot of uh, you know, straight-haired people are very, very deficient in testosterone. That's why still today you will see a lot of you know, ads on TV uh, selling testosterone, testosterone to people. Because they found out there were deficiencies in that and that the black bodies or black people in general had more of the, that testosterone. Which is the reason why a lot of black females and black men look the way they are. Okay? So, they also found out, uh, with, with, with these studies, they found out a lot of deficiencies that they had in like the mineral content in their bodies and bones and muscle mass and everything else. So from then on, that's how steroids came into being. Because steroids are those deficiencies that albino people have, that black people have in so much natural content. So in order to bring up the performance or try to compete and have some sort of advantage to keep on painting the myth of white security for us, performance enhancing drugs called steroids came into being and this gave the albinic athletes a little bit of advantage but then they still couldn't outperform the black folk so the history of steroids is based on the history on the fact that albinic people couldn't compete with black people in every sport even up till today it still stands so that is the history of sport because for a long time the myth of white superiority wasn't uh, was was a ridicule so they didn't they, that's why they bad uh, black people from competing in the olympics for so long until some was uh, during the uh, civil rights era when they started allowing black people to come into sports much more regularly so we see this every day but because we have been trained by what we see what we hear and what we read we have believed in the myth of white supremacy and superiority when the facts tell us every day that is not the case but we still believe it and it's given a lot of you know albinic people a mental ascent which is based on an illusion because in reality, they can compete. If you take away the performance enhancing drugs and compete one on one with a black person in the same category or the same weight class and height class as you, in most cases, mark my words, in most cases, the black person is always going to come up on top. That's just fact. So getting back to uh, this story now and trying to make you understand why uh, the black woman in general has more of that muscle, uh, musculoskeletal mass, we also have to look at the torsos here. Because black people have a shorter torso, black women in general have shorter torsos, and then we can, we're going to explain how the fat content is being distributed so you understand why it is that a black woman of the same height and weight okay 
will be more curvier than anybody, even a Hispanic of the same height and weight, with a more butt, with a greater butt or behind than a Hispanic count counterpart. And the Hispanic counterpart has to have a butt at all, she's going to be fatter because this is just true. She's gonna have more fat because remember we explained that black people in general have more tissue, body tissue, body tissue than fat in their bodies. That is the truth. So let's read this first. It says here, you can copy out this website and go read up on it. It says tosses and legs. This is when the, his, uh, the study was starting to be made on why black people seem to out be outperforming, uh, you know, uh, albinic people or white people as they call it in springs and races and everything that has to do with physical activity. They found out here that the torsos, you know, which is true. If you go measure, if you're all white and you measure yourself with a black person of the same height, you find out that your torso is going to be longer and the black person is going to have longer limbs than you. It says here in the study, the scientists gathered data available from the militaries of 17 nations. Militaries measure the recruits for uniform fittings on a reliable source of data, Bajan said. To approximate torso length, the scientists compared the average height of the military men with their sitting height, the distance from a chair to the top of their head. Results show the average sitting height of blacks was about 1.5 inches, 3 centimeters shorter than that of whites, who were the same height. This means that among blacks and whites of the same height, the legs of blacks were longer. Think of a long-waisted person while the torsos of whites were longer. So blacks have the shorter torsos. So let's get into how the fat is distributed or how black people, first of all, carry the fat in their body. Black women in general carry their fat and black people in general. Uh, or not, let's like make it very clear how black women carry fat because all black males or all males in general carry fat towards the front of their body, that means towards the abdomen. But black women carry it differently. So we're gonna show you that, then explain, okay, why you see what you see. So let's do that. Still from the same article that we're using. If we uh, if I change the article, I'll let you know, okay? So it says you can copy out that link right there. It says here, blacks tend to carry relatively more fat on the back and lateral portions of the bodies, and whites have greater amounts of subcutaneous fat on the front of their bodies. So here is the explanation now why black women have a more leaner and curvier figure with a bigger butt. Bigger butt, not hips, bigger butt behind it. The kind of butt that, you know, I'm not talking about because a lot of people can have clothes that form fit, like I just said before, uh, because I, we see this every day. You, uh, you, you go out with a, maybe like a Hispanic or, you know, um, an albino girl, and you've probably seen her in the gym. Uh, she's wearing all this form-fitting, has a very nice, it seems like it has a very nice looking butt and everything else in those jeans or... Uh, uh, dress that she's wearing or you know pants yoga pants that she's wearing and you guys go to a beach and he takes it off all takes it off and the butt just falls flat because all the pants we're doing we're just lifting it up and firming it but with black women what you see in the yoga pants and in the clothes when they go to the beach is the same thing you see when they take it off that's just truth so we're here to explain why that is possible. First of all, the torso of black women are shorter. They have longer limbs, shorter torsos. And anybody that's of straight hair, it doesn't matter what origin you're from, Hispanic, white, uh, Caucasian, Japanese, Asian or whatever, have a longer torso, 1.5 inches longer. And they have shorter limbs. So that is the first thing that makes black women much more curvier. Second thing, black women have more body. What do we mean more body? That means if you hold a black woman's body, she will have more tissue and more muscle than fat in her body. 
and anybody else with straight hair will have more fat than muscle and tissue. When you compare them of the same height and weight, remember that, same height and weight, okay? That is one other difference. The next difference, uh, before we talk about the, the way to carry fat, black people have the smaller waist to hip ratio than anybody else. So that means if you put a black woman with any other woman of the same height and weight and you measure the waist and the, uh, and the hips, the black person will have a smaller waist compared to a hip, while anybody with straight hair will have a bigger waist compared to the hips. So that is why black women are more curvier. And let me show you that from here, that blacks have uh, the smaller waist to hip ratio. So same article, you could pause the video at any point in time and copy out this link. It says here, the black women have the smallest waist to hip ratio. All right? Black women have smaller waist to hip ratio. Now, another thing that you're going to read from this article, we said, uh, which we'll explain later, so a lot of people will understand this, because this is all what we're saying is part of the book. It says, researchers discovered that black and Mexican women distribute fat equally between the trunk and extremities. Now, what does that mean? So, with black women and Mexican women, it just means that they tend to carry more fat in the trunk of the body than in their extremities. So that's what it means here, all right? While uh, people who call themselves Caucasian seem to carry more of their weight, uh, they have more fat uh, spread in the limbs. That means if a Caucasian woman is getting fatter, the weight distribution goes more to her legs, all right? And some to the trunk, while with black and Mexican women, it's more like centrally uh, in the trunk of the body, that means the toss of the body. But there's a difference in how that is spread. So let me just show you that before we come back to continuing to what we're trying to talk about, one of the major reasons why black women are much more leaner and curvier than everybody else. So let's, let's, let's do that first of all. You can pause the video at any point in time and copy out this particular link. This because this is just talking about how the fat is distributed across the body. And we'll explain it more and the difference while Hispanics seem to want to carry it much more like, like black people but not the same. So we'll explain that sooner or later. But we want to read this first of all so you see this. It says, Axtra, we examine the influence of race, ethnicity, and body fat distribution for a given body mass index. Among reproductive age women, body weight, height, and body fat distribution were measured with a digital scale, wall-mounted stadiometer, and dual energy absorptionary DXA, respectively on 708 healthy black, white, and Hispanic women 16 to 33 years of age. So you should know that these are very healthy women, 16 to 33 years of age, okay? It says, multiple linear regression was used to model relationship between race, ethnicity, and different body fat distribution variables after adjusting for bone, uh, bone, uh, bo body mass index, which is BMI, age at menage, which means uh, the age at which, uh, that means these women are still in their reproductive years, uh, and demographic and lifestyle variables. For a given body mass index, white women had the highest total fat mass total. Okay? Fat, FM means here, uh, FFF means here, fat mass total in the body. That means white women had a greater fat content in the body than muscles and tissue. So that's just what is explaining fat mass total. They had trunk fat mass. White women had a uh, trunk fat mass. That means they had more fat in the trunks. That means in the torso of the body. Torso meaning from your shoulders down to your hips. They had more fat. And uh, fat mass total trunk fat mass. Okay. And leg fat mass. That means they had more fat in their legs too. While Hispanic women had the highest percentage of fat mass trunk, that means Hispanic women 
carried more fat in the torso of the body from the shoulders down to the hips they had more fat content than muscle mass and tissue all right and he also goes on to say um uh, while Hispanic women had the highest percentage of fat mass trunk, percentage of fat mass trunk, and trunk to limb fat mass ratio. So that means they had more, all right, of their fats in their trunks than in their legs than uh, um, white women, okay? And he goes to say again, um, a uh, white well, had the percentage of fat mass trunk and trunk to limb fat mass ratio and fat mass ratio trunk to limb so everything that had more fat content the hispanics had it more in their tassels than anybody else okay while the white women had generally more fat everywhere than anybody else the hispanics had it more in their trunk than everybody else then he says conversely black women had the lowest fat mass total black women had the lowest fat content that means they had more muscle more tissue than fat in their bodies they had they also had the less fat mass in their trunk that means they had less fat in the torso of the body from the shoulders to the hips and percentage fat mass free body fat mass percentage body fat mass here percentage body fat mass means in total all right they had less fat everywhere and just more body more body meaning they had more muscle and tissue than fat and percentage fat mass in the trunk they had very low percentage of fat in the trunk that means they had more less fat in from uh, from their shoulders to their hips and fat mass ratio trunk to limb so they had more uh, and had also less uh, fat in the limbs as compared to the trunks okay that means they had less fat in their legs and arms than compared to the body that means compared to the toss of the body from the shoulders to their hips and the highest fat mass leg leg and the highest percentage fat mass percentage of fat mass leg percentage all right so that means everything was slower in the trunks than in the bodies that's all what it means right there so let's continue on forward so still in the same article this is where i read to show you that you know black women in general when compared to other women of the same height and weight please remember that same height and weight have very low fat in their bodies because why they have the denser thicker bones and then they also have the higher muscle mass and tissues in their body which doesn't allow space for a lot of fat to stick around so he says here most specifically black women have lower visceral adipose tissue adipose tissue meaning fat for a given body mass index waist circumference or waist to hip ratio than white women white women and hispanic women that's what it's trying to say so let's now explain and go back because we we're trying to explain how uh, they carry the fat all right we already read to you that black women carry the fat uh behind on their backs and laterally so let's 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 read that again before we explain into detail why black women are much more curvier we read again from another that the article now is a different because it's two article articles i'm reading so when i tell you to pause the video and copy out this link that means it's a different article so but uh it's two just two articles with different links so I read again, it says, relative to the fat deposition, patterning of whites, blacks tend to have less subcutaneous fat in the extremities than in the trunk. Blacks also tend to carry relatively more fat on the back and lateral portions of their bodies. And whites have greater amounts of subcutaneous fat on the front of their bodies. So why are black women more curvier? One, they have the denser thicker bones okay so and they have also the greater muscle mass 
and greater tissue so there is no space for fat so that's why they're more curvier so what with Hispanic women and white women they have if you compare them with a black woman of the same height and weight they are going to have less muscle mass and less tissue in their bodies and more fat then also how they carry the fat so black women all right carry the fat laterally and behind them so as you've read here they carry fat on the back and lateral portions of their bodies so what does this mean so you have to understand first what back and lateral portions mean it means back and side so the back of your body and the sides of your body but not in front so here is what happens if a woman has let's say a hundred percent fat based on the same height and weight if she's black all right the weight of the fat uh, she's adding on uh, gaining weight based on fat based on fat the fat is going to go behind to her bum all right it's going to go behind to her bum and her back and the sides and so if you distribute the fat it's going to it's going to be 70 percent all right to the bum the back and the sides so the fat patterning there is adding the fat to behind the woman and on her side sides of her body and 30 percent just go to the front for a black woman so it adds on the fat and makes it much more curvier figure okay now if you're a Hispanic woman and you have fat you're going to have 55% of the fat go to the front of the body and the back of the body It's not gonna go to the side because that's how Hispanic women carry weight to the front mostly and a little bit to the back so that's how the weight distribution is it is set they don't carry it to the side but to the front and the back they carry more of it to the front and a little bit less to the back so when a, a, when a, a Hispanic woman is getting curvier she's gonna have more fatty tissue than a black woman and the black woman is carrying it to the sides and to the back and just a little bit to the front while Hispanics carry it more to the front and some to the back so if you split the weight of the fat it's 55 percent to the front and 45 to the back now with white women as they call it white women carry if they have 100 percent fat all right 70 70 percent of it is gonna go to the front 20 percent of it is gonna go to the legs and arms and 20 and 10 percent is gonna go to the back that is the difference in the fat compositions amongst these three women which makes the black woman more curvier and also remember the black woman has a shorter torso so because of that shorter torso she's gonna have a very pronounced pelvic tilt forward than anybody else because of the shorter torso that 1.5 inches shorter torso gives her a very inclined pelvic tilt which even adds to the more curvy nature and also remember black people have the denser stronger bones so the hips are going to be much more wider that is what makes black women much more curvier so when people are going to the gym all right and trying to because if if the elite were telling us the truth they would let you know that all the exercises that a lot of people do for their butt isn't going to work like that of a black woman because you're not built that way you don't have the bones for it as they would say the genetics but they don't want to tell you the truth because they are using you to feed off on what they want you to which is to keep them in power they are not telling you truth they're lying to you so when we bring up this kind of information like this a lot of people you know get mad about it but this is not about you know putting anybody down or making you feel bad 
He's just trying to show you the truth which we see every day. This is not just this document that's talking about it or what we're reading from the website. It's something we see every day. Such that the myth of white supremacy and superiority only exist on paper because the reality every day tells you it's not the case. It's not. Black people are naturally superior in their genetics, the way they are built. But a lot of them don't know this. Why wouldn't they ever know this? Because their history, what they see, what they read, what they hear, is controlled by the white supremacists, the albino supremacists. And because of that, they will never know. So white supremacy is actually real on paper. And how are these people able to control? All right. How is the white elite able to control our history? It's because they control the money. And why have they controlled the money? Because through a lot of agents, the greatest traders mankind has ever had, which are the so-called black leaders, have not let the world know what they are doing they've been successful because black leaders are making them successful because they are more greedy for filthy lucre than the truth so they're successful because white people or the albinic elite control the money they control the money because they have made everybody to believe that you do not need to grow your crops and plant your animals because agriculture is the most important thing in life. If you're to make a living, you have to have land and grow your own crops and grow your own animals. But the albanic elite, the white elite in the Vatican, have made people to believe that you should not grow your crops and animals. They've taken that out of the picture. When they take that out of the picture, you have, you only thing that you're dependent on is the money system. But when you get sucked into the money system, you're a slave. If anybody is to be set free from white supremacy in general, or the way this world is being run by the elite, because it's not run by the elite for any good, for even their own populations, which they claim, they are just using them as cannon fodder to stay in power. They're not telling them the truth. If anybody is to be set free from this, you have to learn how to grow your own crops and your own animals. That is just truth. Because when you do so, you have something to sustain yourself and you won't be dependent on the system of white supremacy. So this is why blacks are more superior genetically as we've presented. Now, let's read something else about the muscle mass so you can understand that black people build more better muscles. That's why they are stronger and faster. It's something you even see in bodybuilding. If you go to a bodybuilding show, you notice that all the bodybuilders come out with a tan. Why is that? Because black bodies show more muscle than pale albinic skin. That's just truth. And let me show you some stuff on that before we can continue on and finish up on this myth of whiteness part number 15 and uh, no need for pastors uh, uh, part number 2. So I read again from the same way page here. It says uh, a Wally Health theory is that, um, let me see, okay, that's the right place to read. So a Wally Health theory is that blacks have genetically greater skeletal muscle mass than whites. And this greater mass causes added stress on the bone, thereby resulting in greater bone mass content and bone mass densities. Ellis observed a strong relation between bone mass content and low body and low body mass that was independent of age and racial or ethnic classification. Furthermore, Hampton, it all suggested that blacks have a denser muscle mass and a greater muscle tissue weight than whites. So blacks have more body. More body means you have more muscle and more tissue than fat. That's all what it means. So let me read some more stuff in here. So I read again, it says here, um, 
Care counting and specific gravity measurements, Hampton and all examined the body composition of a racially mixed group of teenagers. These re researchers noted that the lean body mass of black boys was higher when measured by care counting and specific gravity than by anthropometry. They concluded that black males might have a greater and denser muscle mass. It's not a might, it's true. This is why, you know, when white supremacy wants to start lying, they've told you the truth already, now they want to say, say might. But it's not true. They have a greater and denser muscle mass. So most stuff to read. So I read again, it says, because increased total body potassium, so TBK means total body potassium, with increasing body height is a better marker of muscle growth than its increased total body weight. They speculated that there was a greater increase in the muscle mass of growing young black males that in that of their white counterparts which we see every day you see young black males who've never been in the gym and they are ripped with six-pack abs and muscles everywhere this is just something we see every day like I've said go in your gym that's why in bodybuilding when you get into the building you see that it's the black folk in there that have the nicest looking muscles they have sep muscle separation that doesn't contain a lot of water and fat because some people are just big but there is no muscle separation there is no quality muscle there's no muscle separation you see the definitions well on black people or black males in that gym than anybody else with straight hair so that is why in bodybuilding people tan because with the black of the body the more the muscles show so they can improve the quality of the way they look by tanning, but it doesn't improve the density of the muscles. It doesn't. So let me just read why uh, 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 bodybuilders tan before we can continue and finish on the transvestigation of John Hagee today. Now, this article that I'm reading from is not very clear because it's white supremacy at work. Because when they're trying to hide stuff like this, they don't want people to understand that you going to the gym, like a lot of people will go, uh, you know, a lot of people with straight hair will go and say they want to have a bigger butt. I mean, it's ridiculous that you're denigrating the very people that you say are nobodies, all right? Which is, which is our black people and black women in general. And then you have straight haired women or white women or, or albinos as we will call them, trying to look like black women for example kim kardashian she goes and injects herself with a butt that's almost going to kill her all right at the same time they are denigrating black women everywhere they say they are nobodies just like that woman that i just showed you on a, a, a on, on a screen today who said for the fact that this is a poor woman just trying to downgrade and denigrate people for no reason Denigrate people for no reason just to make themselves feel happy that there are somebody's That the only reason why she's giving birth to 38 kids is because she's poor and The white woman is doing it because she's not poor. And she has 20s uh, 20 babies rather That's all what it is Here are people you're denigrating the very people that you're trying to look like Whom you ridicule for having bigger butts and bigger behinds and looking more curvier it is ridiculous. So this is white supremacy trying to hide at work, you know, that in bodybuilding that blacks build the better muscles, which is truth. But you will never hear that in your gyms or whatsoever. They'll just, just tell you you have great genetics. Why don't they just tell you the truth of this genetics? That you're structurally built different. Because if they tell you that, then the myth of white supremacy is going to fall like a pack of cards. Because the facts do not show that white people or anybody with straight hair are superior to blacks. It shows every day that the blacks are superiors in sports, in everything. Not just some fabrication that they could make for like people like Tom Brady, who's actually a female, and say he's the greatest quarterback of all time because they're rigging all his games, but in real fact, in real competition. If they remove even all the performance enhancing drugs that you know a lot of you know albino athletes or white athletes take around the world to even have a competitive advantage against these black dudes they still fail 
take all the competitive drugs you want to take and go run a long distance race with an Ethiopian or Kenyan from Africa and see if you can still win with that. It still won't work because the genetics, the so-called bones are not built for it. So white supremacy only exists on paper. It's not reality. But we've all been sucked into it because we are not looking at the reality. Even though we see it with our own eyes, we still deny it. Because we are feeding off it. So here's white supremacy at work trying to hide the fact, the reason why people get a tan. Because you can see this web page, you can barely read it. So copy out this link right here. All right, follow my mouse. Copy out this link and go read it yourself and see what it says. It says here, the reason for tanning, because that's what the question is trying to uh, answer. It says, it defines muscle. Muscles appear more prominent on darker skin tones than on lighter skin tones. So fake tanning is a clever way to increase muscle definition without making any, any effort laying up yourself uh, laying up yourself, uh, up yourself and tan on the skin is a bodybuilding's last ditch attempt to accentuate his stroke of muscles for competitions and contests. The next reason why they say the tan, because the tan is just a black body, because this is what black bodies naturally have. It says, it creates the illusion of a slimmer profile. So because black people in general have a slimmer profile because they have more body mass, more body mass in the sense that they have more body, more muscle mass and more tissue and less fat. That's all what it means. So even if you measure like a 220 pound black guy with a 220 pound white guy or anybody else, the black dude will have more muscle definition if they have the same height and weight class in any competition that they're doing. Because he just has the ability to build more muscle. Because of his black. He's black. That's, his, that's what it is. So, it goes on to say here, it creates the illusion of a slimmer profile. Bodybuilders spend years reducing their body fat. Hear that? It's still talking about fat. And upper and upping their time at the gym to ensure that their muscles are visible even when not flexed. A spray tan helps them to look even leaner as the darker color draws the eye inwards towards the oblique and transverse muscles of the abdomen. This slimming effect occurs in all body types, so you don't have to be a muscle man to benefit from it. It's throwing you in a light here. It doesn't occur in all body types because it's lying. The myth of white supremacy or white superiority has to keep on going. Another thing it says, it covers up stretch marks. See that? So the black bodies have less stretch marks. Well, I don't want to spend too much time um, reading this. You guys can read. Let me just play a short clip here so you can see that, you know, for you to be a bodybuilder, you just have to tan. And these people won't ever tell you the truth. They'll just tell you it just looks good. Instead of telling you truth that if you are not black, you can look the way you look. That's just true. And this is somebody who's on a ton of gear and steroids just to look like this. And he's tanning. That's all what it is. So the myth of white supremacy. That white people are the stronger and better of our species. Only exists on paper. It only exists on paper. It only exists in our minds. Because we have believed everything that we hear and see or read, which is controlled by white supremacy. That's why history is very, very important. History is not just what you, you know, they tell you is official history. History is everything that you see, hear or read around you. Know that. If you don't control that, somebody else is painting uh, an identity for you, which you may not like. That's just all what it is. Everything you see, all the images you see, hear or read, is history. Control your history. Alright, let's move on now and get into John Hagee. First of all, I want to read something from the Bible because people have to understand that Christianity is very, very fake because the Vatican runs it. And what I'm reading is from Deuteronomy chapter number 23. Which says that none that is hurt by busting 
busting means here that a man's testicles are out, okay? Or that have his private member cut off. Private member here means your private member. You know what that means. So for women, for women it would be the breast. For men, it would be the testicles and appendages, right? He said. None that is hurt by a busting or that hath his private member cut off shall enter into the congregation of the Lord. But here we have John Hagee preaching in the congregation, telling you that Christianity is very, very false. Let's get into some pictures so you can actually see that John Hagee has been playing you for a fool for a very long time, that you've been looking at a woman all along. And his son Matt Hagee as well. Let's go. So here is both of them, Matt Hagee and John Hagee, the great Pentecostals which a lot of people go to listen to. As you can see here, John Hagee in the background has the hourglass figure of a woman. And you guys never did notice that, that he's shaped so oddly because it's a woman. The reason for all the baggy clothes is not to tell you that they are good Christians, all right? Because a lot of people hide on the good Christians in dressing by dressing in baggy clothes and saying they don't want to look make their figure stand out, so they want to just look holy. It's all a fad. As you can see right here, John Hagee has the hourglass figure of a female, and this hips right here is below the crotch, as you can tell by this Q angle. And so does his so-called son, which is daughter. You can actually see there's an arch in this back, and this Q angle right here is the Q angle of a female. Because both of them are transgenders. They've been lying to you. They've been lying to the whole Christian population in the United States of America that they are males when they are not. We'll give you some more pictures. Here is John, uh, Matt Hagee, rather, the, uh, the son, who actually is, is the daughter, who is now the person who is leading. And look at that, raising hands. God has a great plan for you. But he never told you for one single day that he is an agent and is a female. Look at this Q angle below the crutch. Because he's 100% woman. He's not a man. Matt Hagee. Alright, some more pictures. And here is John Hagee again. As you can see, that oddball is because it's a woman. Look at that. This Q angle. I know it's not a very clear picture because, you know, the Vatican is busy hiding her. But you can see right here, this is the Q angle of a female right here below. As you can see, right here, below the crutch. Because John Hagee is 100% female. Let's look at some more pictures. Here's John Hagee right here. And look at the long back of a female. Can you see that? Because remember, a woman's butt, from the waist to the hips, travels longer because the hips are below the crutch. So it gives a woman a longer butt, okay? So when a, a woman bends down like you see right here, the butt is almost, cu it cuts the body in half because this is where the butt starts and travels longer all the way down to here where is John Hagee's hips. And you can see he has an arch in the back. And look at all these people raising their hands around here. Because people, you have to understand. But I started, I started by showing you guys this earlier in, in the video. The, the, the God wants you to worship Him in spirit and in truth. So when you come and see truth, if you're worshiping God, what you're, going, what you're actually doing is a search for the truth and nothing more. But people go to church because they want their problems solved. You want to get maybe a new house, a new car, a man or a woman in your life, some child or something like that. That's what people go to church for. But we were never, ever asked to come to God seeking all that. What, what does the Bible say? The Bible says, seek ye the kingdom of God first and all other things will be added unto you. Doesn't it say so? So that means we're called to look for the truth. Look and accept truth. Like the lady, if she had accepted the truth of what we tell you, because we're not trying to, you know, beat down anybody because we can't control the way we are born. 
Nobody controls how he or she is born into this world or who her parents are. We just found ourselves here. So why would we be beating up anybody? All what we're doing is just exposing truth. And she's hating it because it's too much bitter for her to accept that her so-called myth of white superiority or white supremacy is actually false. So if you're looking for God, you're looking for truth. You're not looking for anything else. Going to church, you should have been looking for truth. If you were all looking for truth, we wouldn't be in this mess. So let's move on to some other pictures of John Hagee. Well, here is a picture of Matt. So we'll be flip-flopping between Matt and John Hagee because they are both stooges in this. Look at the great humongous hips on Matt Hagee here. This would make any woman jealous. So these are two lesbians right here telling you that there are a couple in Christianity. In the Christianity that frowns on homosexuality. That says it is wrong for a man or woman to lie with another man or woman as they were lying with a, a woman. And this is two of them. Lesbians right here lying to you. Look at this humongous hips on this so-called man. Because Matt Hagee right here is a female. A stooge of the Vatican. Look at this. Look at how wide this hips are and spreading here. And this woman is holding her right here. The so-called wife pretending that they're a couple. This is a disgrace. That's why you don't belong in any church. All you need is your Bible because these are all a bunch of deceivers right here. Some more pictures. And look at John Hagee with Donald Trump. I have to tell you guys something right here. We once made a video and we got some very bad pictures of Donald Trump. Uh, so far in all the videos that we started making, we've made four mistakes on a video because of bad pictures. Uh, those four mistakes, one belonged to Donald Trump, one belonged to a lady called Charlotte Kasiragi, uh, one belongs to uh, Nini Licks, and uh, who's the fourth person there, if I can recall? Um, I think that's about it. Um, who's the fourth person that we made a mistake on? Do you remember? Um... Uh, I'm trying to recall the fourth person, but we've made four mistakes and that's the most I can learn because we got very bad pictures and when we got good pictures, so in your transvestigation, that's one thing you have to, um, you have to take into consideration, getting good pictures and what do I mean by getting good pictures? First of all, you have to make sure that the pictures that you're getting doesn't have the person in any awkward position. Awkward positions is going to throw your transvestigation off. Uh, the next thing you have to take in consideration is that you have to find pictures in which the person is not maybe like raising hands or lifting something up that puts the back under stress. Because when the back put, it gets under stress, it's going to throw you off and you might, try, you might look at a back and think that it's harsh when it's not because it's, there is stress on the back or the back is trying to straighten out. Okay? So, uh, or you might make a... Um, so uh, those are the things you have to eliminate in your transvestigation. You have to find very good pictures. Otherwise, you're going to be making a lot of mistakes. So we made, we've made four mistakes in our videos, and we've edited those parts out because Donald Trump, I'm sorry to say, fellas, Donald Trump is no man. Okay? But we'll have a video later on in the future with all the presidents that are not who they claim. We won't put the uh, we won't put the video up on YouTube. We'll just send you a link to go watch it. All right. So we made a mistake on Donald Trump. So Donald Trump is not a man. All right. Same with this woman that you're looking at right here, because when you look at the screen or looking at her face right now, you can see the femininity oozing out of this so-called great pastor John Hagee shaking hands with Donald Trump, because these are two females right here. You can see right here that John Hagee has an arch in the back. All right, and the arch is right where at the elbows. See that? Because that's where the female waist point comes to rest. Okay, 
let's move further and here is John Hagee again look back look at that fine hourglass figure that would make any female jealous let me blow this up I know the picture is not very very clear but you can see clearly uh, we hope we see clearly rather you can see the Q angle is below the crotch because John Hagee is 100% female take a good look and he, he's one of those females that has a very beautiful hourglass figure she's one of those females Look at this, lying to you and speaking in that sonorous voice. Oh, yeah, the grace of God. Yeah? And you actually believe that he's talking about God, a real God. And look at all the stooges behind them in the choir. John Hagee is a woman, 100% female. Was never a man in the first place. All right, let's go another. Oh, we already showed you this picture. Let's show you another one. That's John Hagee again. We just wanted to show you the face that you, when you start looking at that face, you see the femininity oozing out of her because it's 100% female. Uh, I'm trying to recall the, the, the mistake that we made uh, because we, uh, I'm, hold on a second, let me see if I can get uh, the uh, talk to somebody here to give me uh, the mistake that we made on those uh, the four mistakes I think that we made before. Oh well, they're saying that it was just actually three mistakes. It wasn't four, so it was with just uh, Donald Trump, uh, Nini Licks and Charlotte Casarati that we made those mistakes on uh, that's all what it made because we got very bad pictures so that's what I'm saying the, um, you know, for your trans investigations to come out right you have to get very good solid pictures but continuing on John Hagee right here has an arch in the back because he is 100% female and not a man in any way a very fake past and a lot of people are sitting under this so-called fakey and saying they're listening to God See, because here's, here's one thing you have to know. If the person who is giving you a message, if the root of the message is a lie, that means everything else is a lie. That's just fact. If John Hagee cannot tell you that he is a lesbian, or she's a lesbian rather, and that she's, a man, she's not a man, then every word coming out of this feminine lips is a lie and will do you no good. Because the best way to get to uh, to uh, to get advice is get it from somebody who's done it. So, for example, let me give you an example of somebody who's giving you very bad advice. Steve Harvey, for example. Steve Harvey likes give a lot likes giving a lot of relationship advice. But Steve Harvey has been divorced, or I think married twice or three times now. Why would you think that any advice coming out from his lips is going to work? Because he hasn't done it himself. So if you're going to get advice from somebody, get it from somebody who has walked the walk and talked the talk. And not just talking and who's never done it. Because it's not going to work. Because the root is a lie. That's how you listen to advice. So let's, let's, let's move forward on John Hagee on this. Oh, my mouse is seeming to act up. Sorry about that. John Hagee, again, as you can see right here, even though they've covered this banner up, you can still see that this Q angle is below the crutch. And so with this so-called son of his, you can see there is an arch in this back. And these are all lesbians right here, four females pretending that they're telling you about the gospel of God, of Jesus. They are fake Jesus because Jesus is fake. Yehoshua is real. All right? There's a difference between the two. So know that. Call on the real name of God, Yehoshua. We go into a lot of explanation in the book to make you understand how the name is Yehoshua. Jesus is Greek. How can a man who was born to a Hebrew family bear a Greek name? Does that make any sense? Can you be from China and China is the only language you speak and you bear a Latin name? When you've never, when you weren't born in, in Italy, you weren't born in any of those uh, Latin countries. Does it make any sense? And 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 Mandarin or Chinese is the only language you speak. Does it make any sense to you? So these are a bunch of deceivers right here, in John Hagee and his so-called son Matt Hagee. They are all females. They are practicing homosexuality right in front of your face, and you don't even know it, and you think. That you're going to church. You're worshiping God by listening to these fellows. Alright, some more pictures. Really showed you that this is the bum, uh, the midsection of a woman and not the midsection of a ma any man. Look at, 
here is where the Q angle of John Hagee is and the palms are right at where the hips are on this body because this has the short arms of a woman and not any man all right let's go here is John Hagee again look at that face now is that the face of a man I want you to look clearly because now I think the scales are falling off your eyes you can see very clearly that this is the picture of face of a female it's not a man look at that all right some more pictures and here is Matt Hagee look at this humongous hips I mean he's I think he has she has one of the biggest hips we have ever seen while doing a trans investigation just take a look at this hips let me blow this up this this requires some blowing up so you guys can see clearly look at that below the crotch look at that goodness gracious look at that and he's lying to you that he's actually female where are these children coming from this is what I'm talking about where are, these, where are they getting these children say this kind of things just makes me so I get so infuriated where are they getting these children from they're bringing people into this is what I'm trying to tell people so you can understand that white supremacy is using you it has no truth so if you're stuck up on it and you actually believe that your elites are doing you good by the stories they tell you that you are the superior or superior people in the world they have been lying to you they are using you for their own purposes to keep themselves in power it's not about any, doing anybody any good they are not doing you any good by all the advantages that they give you they're sending you to hell where are they getting these kids from just take a look at this where are they getting these children from John Hagee is 100% 100% female not a man where are they getting these poor kids from? Imagine if you were one of them. Okay, let's move on. Here's John Hagee again. I'm sorry if I'm getting so. I'm, I'm muttering right here because I'm so angry. I'm so I'm so mad at what is going on here. I'm so mad at what's going on. Sometimes, sometimes I wish I was. I wish God gave me a choice. I I wouldn't. I wouldn't be born in this world there's so much when you you guys don't understand the half of what I know or even a tad bit of what I know you guys don't know I'm trying to I'm trying as much as possible to put it inside a book so you guys I'm trying to make a video so I don't wanna okay it's John Hagee just look at his hands right here this is a woman and not a man uh, let's go into the next picture uh, here's John Hagee right here you can see this is the uh, the long pelvic length of a female from the waist down to where you have the crutch okay and this is uh, the crutch of a woman you can see uh, this is the uh, thigh spread of a female sitting right here not the thigh spread of a man this is the thigh spread of a, a woman sitting with a very long pelvic you know uh, region okay this is not the pelvis of any man at all this is a woman as you can if you're looking right here you will find out that when you view let me try to blow this up as much as I can so you guys can see it there is no it doesn't look like there is any scrotum in there that looks like you're looking at a labia of a female same with this uh, son of his right here this doesn't look like any scrotum is in there that looks like the pubic arch of a woman even the thighs because these are both liars and deceivers from the Vatican you're both liars and deceivers from the Vatican deceiving you about Christianity that you're actually worshiping God when you're actually they're actually sending you to hell with them look at that 100% females no man look at that pubic arch take a good look let it marinate and sink into your consciousness for a minute you're looking at a female all right 
some more pictures of John Hagee here and you can see that is a female standing even though this is not a very good picture playing golf that's an old granny mama standing with the sun right here two females Q angles below the crutch because they are 100% female and no males all right uh, that's John Hagee look at that is that a woman standing yes it is is it a man no the Q angle says it's below the crutch and look at the arms and the weight carries the arm the small arms and short length of the arms or small wrist as they say or small hands short arms small hands Q angle below the crutch as you can see right here let me blow this up so you guys can see it clearly oh look at that Q angle below the crutch hundred percent hundred percent female it's not a man all right some more pictures of John Hagee look at that these are all lesbians smiling in your face deceiving you that you're worshiping God but we we want Amy we just want to thank you again especially because John Hagee is about 77 years old and before he goes to her grave this truth must be known that he's 100% female with an Q angle below the crutch John Hagee look at that the long pelvic length of a female no man has this kind of pelvic length from his waist to his hips it wouldn't be that long for his crutch because this is a woman all the way down with a Q angle below the crutch and so is her son right here in Matt Hagee alright some more pictures again look at that that's a woman that's a granny standing and oozing look at that remember if you collapse your we already showed you this on the Wakanda video a woman holds her wrist right here is going to be high above the pelvis or high above the pubic region because females normally have shorter arms arm lengths this is what's happening right here this is what you're looking at so John Hagee is 100% female transgender lying to you supporting the fake Israel we already showed you this picture but you can marinate it on a while this is the thigh spread and the pubic arch of two females as you can see right here from this length down here that's way too long that can be that cannot be look that look this is a man look, look you see the difference this is a man right here and this is one of maybe the controllers or this is like the the handlers will handle them because look at that look at the length of his waist to his crotch very short as should be for all men from waist to the crotch very short sitting in a V position as you can see right here and look at this this is a U position see like see that you can draw this right here see this this is forms a U right here U all the way down see that U U U U look at this thigh spread because these are two females and this is where they're sitting in Israel fabricating you fabricating the lie and telling you that the so-called Israel which the support are the Israel of the Bible ridiculous let's go another picture look at that this would be one of the so-called gatherings United States for Israel which the Vatican is using because the Vatican hides behind the Jews to perpetuate all what is doing and you think that you're looking at a woman right here with all the baggy oh sorry you're looking at a man with all the baggy clothes it's hiding the hips that's all what these baggy clothes are for having the worst taste in fashion because they're trying to hide the hips that you've been looking at a female all day all your lives and you couldn't tell all right some more pictures oh, we already showed you this one and here is Matt Hagee again look at these humongous hips that he she has because Matt Hagee is 100% female Q angle below the crutch both female uh, here's uh, John Hagee again look at that look at that Q angle is right there it's below the crutch because this is a hundred percent woman I'm sorry that this picture is a little bit small and blurry and it doesn't doesn't really show but it is it is what it is you're looking at a woman all right another picture again and here is this shows you that the whole system is a fraud the so-called president of uh, Israel what what his name is I don't really care what his name is I think he's is it Benjamin Netanyahu I think that should be his name it's all a fraud because you're looking at a woman right here a fat woman fat woman lying to us that he's a man when he's not all right some more pictures again we already showed you this one look at that look at this right here Q angle below the crutch pretending that he's a man when he's not 
and lying and deceiving the whole world. John Hagee, look at that. Hugh Angle, below the crotch, 100% female. Was never a man in the first place. All right, some more pictures. We uh, just show you the femininity oozing out of this thing that is actually female and not a man. Because you guys never paid attention. We never did really show you this picture already. Uh, John Hagee with his, I think he's his grandmother or whatsoever, the so-called Hagee family, we just say they come along, come down from a long line of pastors. They're all frauds. Look at that. That's a woman. That's a granny right there. You have a granny, that's how she looks because this is a woman, not a man. John Hagee, look at that. This was, this, um, this picture was taken during, I think one of those times they were doing the Christmas, um, uh, maybe it's some sort of a Christmas greeting or so that they were doing to everybody. But remember, guys, we already have a, a, a video on Christmas. Christmas has nothing to do with Yehoshua or his birth. Christmas is a celebration of the sun going into the winter solstice. That's all what it is. Starting the months of winter. It has nothing to do with God. We have a video on it. It's called... Uh, the Sun's Christmas and Easter with Duff McKagan. Look for it on the on the channel, and you get uh, we go into a lot of detail about that. But here is John Hagee with an arch in the back and a granny, as you can see right here. These are two grannies because they are both female, and so with the Sun as well in Matt Hagee. They've been lying to you for a very long time. Their gospel will do you no good because it's all a lie. Let's go further. Look at that. That's a woman. Look at that again, arch in the back, arch in the back, clear as night and day. Look at that, arch in the back, because John Hagee is 100% female, was never a man in the first place. Look at that, arch in the back, John Hagee, 100% female, even through them clothes. You can still see that arch in the back. Really show you this picture, still see that again, Q angle is below the crotch, 100% below the crush because John Hagee is 100% female. Alright, some more pictures again. This is John Hagee again with Matt Hagee. As you can see, these are two women standing and what about the hand clasp? Is above the crutch, not below it like it should be for a male. It should be at least at the crutch area, just slightly above it. Even if it's not going to be uh, slightly longer like a black male, but it should be above the crutch, but this, so it should be below the crutch, sorry to say, but this is above the crutch, not below it. Two females, John Hagee and Matt Hagee. Look at Matt Hagee here. Look at that, Q angle below the crutch. 100% female, hourglass figure. Very, very definitive, hourglass figure. And this is probably on TBN. So if you're watching TBN and all those shows that you watch on TBN, they're all false. They're all false lying to you for the Vatican. We already showed you this picture. Look at John Hagee from the back. If you didn't know this was a female, look again. Let it marinate and sink into your consciousness that you've been looking at a woman all day. Arch in the back, the long bum of a female from the waist right here down to the hips below the crotch. Look at that cute angle, very, very acute because John Hagee is 100% female with an hourglass figure. Another picture. Please download all our videos. Don't forget to do that. Every video that we make, just download it and save it and spread the truth and let all the people know. This is uh, Matt Hagee. As you can see, he's trying to hide behind maybe his so-called brothers here, if they're actually his brothers or people he's just working with. As you can see right here, this cute <coughs> ankle, sorry, it's below the crutch because Matt Hagee is 100% female. 100% female, not a man. But he's trying to hide the hips and try to hide the picture behind one of these guys right here. Okay, let's go. Some other. Okay, we finished with the Matt Hagees. This is just a bonus. Uh, this is uh, from Takeoff of uh, Migos. Takeoff is the one right here because he's the female. These two are males, as you can tell from the hips, the narrow hips right here. And look at the wide hips on the left. So even in hip hop, when you're listening to hip hop, they're putting in some transgenders, and a lot of people don't know. And I'm sure there was more of them down there that we have no clue about. But as long as we keep on finding them, we'll bring them out. Look at the Q angle. It's below the crutch. Look at that. Cute Q angle. Because Takeoff of Migos is 100% female. Been lying to you guys that he's a male of the group called Migos. Look at here, him again here. Takeoff right here. Q angle below the crutch. 
below 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 100% female it's not a man look at that take off again the one in the middle right here look at this Q angle very very acute hourglass figure below the crotch and a lot of people actually believe that this is male take off of the Migos 100% female all right look at that is that a man standing I mean because we always tell you that the way females act is in the genetics all right is in your bones that's the best way to put it it's in your bones the way a female acts walks and talks it's in your bones the actions is that a man is that the mannerism and the stance of a man that is a woman you can tell Migos or take off of the Migos 100% female and not a man Q angle is below the crutch all right here is it again take off again look at this humongous hips on this so-called dude and you actually believe that by looking at the face that you think you're looking at a black male this is a black woman black woman trying to deceive us because she's a stooge of the Vatican as much as Migos the group is can imagine what you're doing behind closed doors so we've come to the end of today's uh, um, video we sorry it was a long video but we had to tell you the truth and um, before we go like we said you still have two weeks to get on the list of the book uh, for the first copies of the book that's going to be coming out um, this particular month uh, you have two weeks left after this week is going to be just like a, a week left for you to get that so if you're still interested in the book send us an email because the Vatican is trying to shut us down we want to put those books in your hands so you can understand your world a little bit far more better and uh, the myth of whiteness or uh, white superiority is all fake because the facts do not tell you the facts on the ground tell you differently but our minds are being controlled because we are listening to what we are being told instead of what we see because we are not looking with our eyes and seeing with your brains we are just seeing with our, with our own eyes so this is one of the uh, last parts of the uh, myth of whiteness which I uh, not, not the last part of the myth of whiteness but the last part of the video which I did not read I just wanted to read to you uh, you can pause the video at any point in time and read that out it says biological differences exist in the body composition of blacks and whites we reviewed literature on the differences and similarities between the two races relative to fat free body mass water mineral and protein fat patterning and body dimensions and proportions in general blacks have a greater bone mineral density and body protein content than do whites resulting in a greater fat free body density meaning they have more muscle mass and more body tissue than fat in their bodies additionally there are additionally there are racial differences in the distribution of subcutaneous fat and the length of the limbs relative to the trunk the possibility that these differences are a result of ethnicity rather than of race is also examined because most equations that predict relative body fat would derive from predominantly white samples biological variation between the races in the bodies in this body composition indexes has practical significance systematic error can result in the inaccurate estimation of the relative body fat of blacks and therefore of the nations of obesity if these inherent differences are ignored so this is something that is a fact in our society the way we label black people as obese is not actually true because we are looking at an albinic system and measure of obesity which is not one and the same so the facts all day show us that black people are biologically and structurally superior to albinos or anybody that's white or anybody that's straight hair but we believe in the myth of white superiority and supremacy because we have been trained by what we see by what we hear and what we read which is history every day telling us it's not the case white supremacy is only a mental ascent is only mentally possible in your mind the facts say differently that is the truth we have to accept because being white is something that just happened and being black is your humanity that's all you have to get from this it's not about beating anybody down it's not trying to make uh, it's not trying to make you feel look down on yourself it's just the truth that we have to accept just as the sun shines every day so with that i'll leave you with these words i'm sorry for the long video but we always have to tell you the truth so look with your eyes 
but see with your brain. I will see you guys later.